is the impeachment push. My next guest has a new op-ed out on foxbusiness.com. Check it out right now, and it is titled Trump's Two Big Wins for Farmers, Manufacturers, Workers versus Dems Impeachment Squad. Joining me right now is the assistant to the president for trade and manufacturing policy, Peter Navarro, out with that op-ed this morning. Good to see you, Peter. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, Maria. So you got important things that you are doing that the president is doing. He just signed a deal with Japan, and yet it feels like the headlines are all focused on this impeachment inquiry from the Democrats and real efforts to take down President Trump. Tell us about your op-ed. Sure. Uh, it's a remarkable thing last week. Uh, on a single day in New York, President Trump signed an historic trade deal with Japan. Uh, across the pond in Geneva, Switzerland, I led a White House delegation. Uh, we were able to get uh, the most sweeping reform of an international organization uh, in our history. And um, it was crickets in, in the media, uh, despite the fact that those two deals alone, those two Trumpian victories, uh, will generate billions of dollars for farmers, ranchers, workers. Uh, manufacturers uh, and really create thousands of jobs. Instead, we got <laughs> the second impeachment circus in three years. And, and make no mistake about this, Maria, make no mistake about this. This is nothing less than an attempted coup d'etat and end run around the ballot box. And I see all these polls out there. Here's like the poll question. Maybe Fox can do a poll on this. It's, it's to the American people. Should the impeachment process be used to depose a duly elected president when they can't beat him at the ballot box? I call that the Al Green question. It's the Houston Congressman Al Green yeah. uh, who said basically, hey, he's doing too good a job on the economy, on China, securing our borders. We can't beat the guy. Let's just impeach him. And it reminds me, there was a, the first guy who, who was the head of the Soviet Union uh, secret uh, CIA equivalent, uh, Beria. He said, you know, show me the man, I'll find you the crime. And that's what we're doing with, uh, with President Trump. And, and it's, this is a very dangerous game, I think, that the Democrats could play. And, you know, every day the president's got to get up yeah. and he's got to deal with China, he's got to deal with Russia, he's got to right. deal with Iran, North yeah, Korea. No, I understand. And now the House of Representatives and I don't know which one's more dangerous right now over the next couple of months. Yeah. Tell me about the deal with Japan and its importance because when the president first took office and he pulled out of TPP, uh, there was a lot of debate on, on, on whether that was the right move because especially given the, the fight with China, if you're in TPP, at least you have allies around. But you say, and you write in your op-ed this morning, that the Japan deal cures a lot of that. Right. Uh, president, first business day in office, I was blessed to be there, watch him sign, get out of the TPP, yeah. heavily criticized. But, but here's the deal. Um, bilateral negotiations yield far better results than multilateral. In the TPP, we had a situation where we already had uh, trade deals with six of those countries. Uh, Japan basically constituted over 90 percent of the rest of the GDP and the others. Within TPP, we might have gotten some good stuff from Japan, but we would have had to basically surrender our auto sector to all these other countries and Japan. This way, we got a great deal for America, and we, we basically have a strong auto and auto parts sector. And uh, you, you can't ask for a better result than that. Yeah, but, you know, you're also seeing an impact on the economy as we await what's going to happen with USMCA, what's going to happen with China. So when you look at global trade, the World Trade Organization, Peter, this morning is warning that yeah. slowing global growth has happened and it is spurred yeah. by the trade dispute with China. It's set to affect investment. It's set to affect job opportunities around the world. Yeah. According to the Wall Street Journal, uh, you're seeing this trade uncertainty impact yeah. trade across the world. So what do you say to that? Yeah. And yeah, can yeah, you might, do might, both? in terms of trying to hold yeah. China's feet to the fire, yeah. but also keep the, the success that this president has had in terms of economics in place. Sure. Yeah, my two favorite sources, the WTO and the Wall Street Journal on, on global trade. But that's another subject. I think uh, over the next 30 days, really, and this is going to be October, this is going to be the hunt for USMCA in October. Uh, to me, that's the most important thing uh, for the global economy, for this hemisphere, and for, the, uh, for America. So uh, I think if we, we, if we were to pass the USMCA, it's good for both farmers and manufacturers, rare in a trade deal. Uh, it's good for all 50 states 
It's hundreds of thousands of new jobs. It's about a point of growth uh, on the GDP. That's what I'm looking for. In terms of the China negotiations, we're going to welcome uh, Liu He here on October 10th. And, and Maria, as you know, the seven deadly sins will be on the table to discuss. Uh, I can't negotiate those uh, uh, publicly here, right. but 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 let's see what happens. But for me, if you think about the USMCA and Canada and Mexico trade, uh, it's, it's twice as much China. trade, yeah. twice as much trade than China. But even more importantly, five times more exports to Mexico and Canada yeah. than we export to China. Because the, the problem with China is that they sell us a bunch of stuff. They create their jobs, but we don't sell them a lot of stuff. Right, so, which is um, why it, 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 it doesn't make a lot of sense to the people who've been listening. Um, that the president would even consider doing a small deal that just affects trade as opposed to looking at all of the seven sins that you've mentioned so many times, sure. including the theft of intellectual property, including the forced transfer of technology, not to mention fentanyl and that drug coming into the United States. That, that comes through Mexico as well, right? Well, I, yeah, well, let's talk about fentanyl. By the end of today, another 100 Americans will die. By the end of the year, it's 50,000 Americans. This is made in China fentanyl. Let's make no mistake about it. And, and back uh, when, when I was in Buenos Aires, Argentina in December of 2018, uh, the president of China looked our president in the eye and he said he was going to stop that stuff. That stuff hasn't stopped. So, so that's a big deal to this country. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, let's see what happens. And um, I, I don't know, but I, I do want to congratulate you, Maria, as, as well as Trish Reagan and Lou Dobbs for the leading, essentially, the coverage on the Hong Kong issue, because th that's 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 out there. Yeah. And today, uh, today in China, um, they show, they're showing off missiles well, that can reach here exactly or hit our right. aircraft carriers. Yeah. What did and you make of that? Meanwhile, in the streets, uh, well, I mean, you know, China, I wrote a China is celebrating 70 years of communist rule, but they're doing it with this military parade, yeah, full pageantry. Yeah. President Xi Jinping not letting Hong Kong protesters and the trade tensions get in the way of this milestone. And yet, you know, some of these things that they're showing off are missiles that can hit the United States, missiles that can hit the South China Sea. Yeah. They're basically reminding everybody we will become the largest power, superpower, economically and militarily. And you say what? Well, I, I think it's an interesting day here for the world because, on the one hand, in Hong Kong, you've got capitalism and freedom versus communism in the streets. And then uh, in Tiananmen Square, that's where those missiles are. That's right. Uh, we see missiles uh, that can reach the United States with nuclear weapons. And more importantly, and I think Mike Pillsbury is going to be on to talk about oh, he this. Was on, he was um, on already. He was on already. And we talked about Hong Kong because we had Jimmy Lai on, the activist, Chinese. Yeah dissident many times. Jimmy lies out with an op-ed this morning in the journal, and it is titled Communist China Turned... Well, the editorial board writes, China, Communist China Turned 70, writing, perhaps the party can use the modern tools of state surveillance and control to maintain power for years to come. No one should assume that yeah. the party's fall is imminent, but we know from history that authoritarians often seem stronger than they are. The party's insistence on total political control may be the seed of its undoing. So, Peter, what are we... Are we just, is this just a waiting game? that well, ultimately well, China will become the largest superpower militarily and, and economically. Well, the, the one thing I wanted to note, I, I wrote this book called Crouching Tiger back in 2015, uh, and I talked about this, this carrier killer missile, the, the, the DF-21. Now they got a new version, an even bigger version that can go 1,000 miles and hit an aircraft carrier, which is a very difficult thing to do. So, I mean, I, <laughs> these are, these are th contexts within which broader discussions um, and need to take place. Um, but, I mean, the contrast between Tiananmen Square missiles uh, that are capable of reaching the U.S. and, and Hong Kong uh, people in the streets, um, it's an interesting uh, October 1st. Uh, and this is what President Donald J. Trump has been up against yeah. since the get-go. I mean, it's, it's yes. going to be very hard uh, to... to deal with a China that seems yeah, so no. intense. And you guys have been on, holding uh, China's feet to the fire. There's domination. no doubt about it. But some of the solutions are also impacting us. I mean, the administration's considering these delisting Chinese companies in the United States. China fired back, warning of unstable international markets should that happen. You're calling these news reports fake, but we know that this was a topic of conversation. How serious is the president considering delisting Chinese companies in the United States, Peter? 
Well, the, but to be very clear here, that was totally fake news by Bloomberg. It cost investors billions of dollars, and Navarro's rule is if it's an anonymous source, uh, it's probably fake news designed to part a fool from, from his money. So don't believe that. And the Treasury Department put out a, a statement, uh, which is correct, that that's not under consideration. But I'll tell you this. I mean, even Not right now, uh, but at some AVIC, point, are you going to well, consider it? it, it no, it, let me just say this. Um, AVIC, which is a big a kind of equivalent to Boeing in China, right now American investors are putting their money into that company and that's the one that built that missile that's in Tiananmen Square today. And meanwhile, Hikvision, mm -hmm. another Chinese company which Americans put their money in, is the one that has the surveillance cam cameras in the concentration camps uh, in we in in, uh, in the, for the Uyghurs. I so, see the point. I see your point. You so know, know so what these you're are things we in. have to think about. We know what, know what you're it. investing is, is, uh, is, is Marco your point. Rubio uh, yeah. has been eloquent on this, and, and we we, are, we have to look at this stuff. Peter, thank you so much. Great to talk with yeah. you as always. Peter, Peter Navarro joining us. We'll be right back.